Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today I have a special guest here. This is the ThinkPad X230T. Now what makes the X230T so special is that it really was the last of this style of X series tablets. There would be other uh, X series that would have a tablet style but this would be the last one of the X three numbered T series. These originally were announced in 2012 and they manufactured them until 2014 until they were superseded by the X240 uh, generation. Obviously this unit is based on the X230 design so it will feature the newer island style keyboard but thankfully we still have an excellent trackpad here awaiting us when we open the lid. Because this is based on the X230, we can expect to see a lot of the similarities between uh, those two machines, so I'm not going to go into all the details of the X230. If you want more information on that, I have an older video up here. The X230T came in three CPU configurations. It came in an i3-2370, an i5-3320M, and then an i7-3520M. It was able to support up to 16 gigabytes of DDR3, uh, 1600 megahertz memory, which is no slouch. That is a lot of memory, especially for a computer of this era. It shared a lot of other functions, including the rapid charge battery. So in the X230 line in that generation, Lenovo developed a what was called a rapid charge battery. And the idea was is that you could get 80% of the charge in your battery with 30 minutes plugged into the wall. Kind of a handy feature, especially on a tablet like this that really does require a huge battery draw. Some of the other key differences that are worth pointing out is that this came in two display configurations. The first was a 12.5 inch 1366 by 768 IPS Gorilla Glass panel that had pen input. The other configuration was a 12 and a half inch 1366 by 768 IPS finger touch display. One thing I did read is that a driver rollback, if you are running Windows 10, is going to be required in many cases to get those uh, touch screens running as you would normally expect them to run. So if you are having any difficulties with that, then don't be alarmed. There are people out there that have the same problem and thankfully a solution. Let's go ahead and do a quick tour of all of the ports and I will point out a few other key differences between this unit and the X230. So starting on the left hand side, we have our CPU vent, USB 3.0, VGA, and full size display port. This is not a mini uh, display port size, which is on the X230. That is one of the changes that they made. We have another USB port. We do have our express card reader and we have a Wi-Fi kill switch waiting for us at the very, very end. Moving along to the right hand side, we have our SD card reader. We have the USB 2.0 always on power delivery. We have our gigabit ethernet, our headphone microphone combo jack. This is the uh, area that we accessed the two and a half inch SATA bay. Pen storage, and then we have our Kensington lock. Moving along to the bottom, we do have a few things that are worth pointing out. The first is the dock connector. So the mini dock series three or part number 4337 or 4338 will not work uh, in here. There are some physical differences on the bottom of this unit. That being said though, if you are adventurous, you can actually just simply modify the dock so it'll fit the X230T. However, I've heard conflicting reports on how many of the ports actually function on that, so just temper your expectations accordingly. If you want a base that will work no matter what, then I strongly suggest that you're uh, chasing down the Ultra Base Series 3, because that works with no modification and all the ports are 100% functional. While we're on the bottom here, I'm going to go ahead and point out to you the three different kinds of batteries that you could get this unit configured with. There was a 3 cell 30 watt hour, there was the uh, six cell, which you see here, the 66 watt hour. And then there was also another slim battery that you could fit on the bottom that would provide you with, I believe, another 64 watt hours. One thing that is worth pointing out is that these rubber feet, sometimes, not in all cases, due to manufacturing tolerances, will cause the machine to tip over on flat surfaces. So just be aware of that as a possibility that you need to watch out for. Last but not least, let's go ahead and open it up and check out our features on the inside uh, that are attached to the screen. So we do have a power button, a rotation, 
and rotation uh, lock button. And then over here we do have the location of our fingerprint reader. The keyboard is a standard X230 keyboard with no real significant modifications or changes. It is worth pointing out that no think light is available on this unit, so even though you will have the pictogram for one, um, one is not present on this device due to the bezels. Now that we've kind of gone over the specs, ports, and other features, let's go ahead and talk about a few things that we can very quickly disassemble. Just like all disassemblies, we are going to start with the removal of the battery on the back. There is a lock that needs to be pushed in that direction, and then the battery can be effortlessly removed. And what a quirky looking battery that this ends up being. So we'll put the battery off to the side. We will grab our screwdriver kit and we will begin to pull out the key components that don't require uh, too, too much effort to get to. So the very first thing that we will do is spin out the captive screws for this access cover here. And there are just two. Once those are removed, we can see both of the RAM slots staring us in the face. The next thing that we're going to go ahead and remove is the hard drive. So there is one screw here for this piece of plastic. Once that is moved up and out of the way, we can see uh, the drive is in there. And this one uh, has a different caddy. This is not what you would normally uh, see. There would be an actual uh, pull tab and everything there, um, but thankfully a fingernail is all you need to reach in there and we can pull out the Samsung X40 Evo drive and move that off to the side. The next major disassembly piece that we will do is to remove the keyboard and because this is a lovely Lenovo machine, we simply just need to look for the screws that are marked with the keyboard pictogram. There is one screw here and then there is one screw here, and it appears to be those are the only two screws that are keeping the keyboard in place. And with those two screws removed, we will go ahead and flip the device back over. And I haven't done this in a long time, but we'll do our keyboard wiggle and try some gentle encouragement. This one just might be a bit stiff. And that appears to be the case. That was just super stiff. So we can fold the keyboard forward and we can disconnect the ribbon right there. So we'll go ahead and just pop that off and the keyboard is easily removed. And underneath here, we don't really have a whole lot going on. We can get a really nice look at the pen storage system. So if you need to do any maintenance on this to get it working properly, uh, there's the screws to remove the parts, and there's the storage. And it's primarily because of that pen that the device actually ends up being deeper than your standard X230. So the next thing we're going to quickly do is, just for the sake of completion and so you can see the majority of the parts, is we are going to go ahead and remove the palm rest. And once again, those are all marked uh, with screws along the bottom. I believe there are four in total that hold it in place. So with those four screws removed, we can gently, and that is the key word here, pry up on the palm rest. I'm just trying to find the best place to get a perch. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect that ribbon before we end up accidentally damaging it. There is a fifth screw. So with that fifth screw removed, we can go ahead and very quickly see and service the remaining parts. So we do have our WAN bay here which we could occupy with what appears to be a MSATA hard drive. We do have our network card. In this case, it ends up being a Centrino Advanced N6205. We have access to our CMOS battery and the rest of the internals. And this one's actually relatively clean. There is a little bit of dust buildup, but other than that, um, any further tear down would simply just be to remove the, the motherboard. So we're gonna go ahead and reassemble this thing. And I am going to talk to you a little bit about things to look out for if you're buying one of these used in the year 2020. And then, uh, yeah, we'll offer up some real quick conclusions. So I'll put this back together and I'll see you in a minute. Now that we have this thing back together, let's talk about what you need to look for when you're purchasing one of these things in 2020. Because of the design of this thing, 
the plastics from my experience have always been a little bit more susceptible to wear and damage. So here are a few things that don't be too surprised if you see on the machine. The first thing is something that you can actually hear and uh, I'll see if you can catch it on the camera. There, there will be some creaking and groaning and a lot of that will come from the display bezel. These clips uh, over time just have not lasted well. If the machine has ever had to have been disassembled, uh, these things tend to be loose, so you'll either need to replace them or uh, live with it, one of the two. But again, don't be surprised if you see that. That's not uncommon. Same thing with the palm rest down here. These uh, were susceptible, especially around the express card area, just because of that hollow plastic. There is an awful lot of flex. I think you can see that on the video. Don't be too surprised if you open one of these up for the very first time and it feels just a little shaky or a little creaky. That is kind of part of the course with a fair few of these machines. And that's not indicative of abuse. That's just how that they've worn. And I suspect that might be a small part among the lack of demand for these machines that led to them not being continued. Be aware of that, that these will show wear more so uh, than other devices. Depending on how the screen uh, has been used and or abused in its lifetime, you might see some gash marks uh, in the display or in the cover of the display. And that usually is from something uh, rubbing or scraping on the palm rest area especially. All in all though, this is a pretty fantastic device to use in 2020, especially if you're looking for a very inexpensive tablet computer that you can service uh, literally within minutes. So this is currently running uh, Manjaro KDE Plasma and it uh, has provided a lot of really positive experiences. So ladies and gentlemen, in the year 2020, this is actually a pretty decent little machine. You can usually find these starting at around 200 Canadian dollars and up, depending on the condition and configuration. The only thing that I would be wary of is that keep in mind that these wear a little bit harder than some other thing pads in the lineup, just due to their design, the thicknesses of the plastic, uh, the use of clips and all of that stuff. Uh, but by and large, it is still a very uh, serviceable machine for all sorts of different tasks and can pretty much come to you uh, pretty highly recommended. So if you enjoy this sort of content and would like to see more, I'm going to encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so the next time that, well, there probably won't be another ThinkPad tablet on this channel for a good long while, but the next time that one does show up, you'll be the first to know about it. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.